We are the ornaments of the beauty of our Abba, his Laya, the wreath of his crown, his Adi, the excellence of his strength, the beauty and the power of his Torah that he manifests in the bosom of a nation that he calls his Elan, his Bohir, Yisraya. And so without Ru'ach, you cannot make Tefireh unto Yah. So you must have the life of Ru'ach. You can have the Holy Ghost all damn day. It is not of any value. And I said with great disappointment to you and as well as you, damn the Holy Ghost. We need Ru'ach, we need the breath of his lively mind in us. And without the power of that mind, you cannot operate in the strength of the beauty of Torah. That's why we are up, we are down, we are cold, indifference. Because we have not the life of assurance, which comes by ruach, breath, life. Thus stated last night, there is no power to any word that is held in the reserve of one's leba, one's mind. It's only when it is spoken it brings life. It's only when it is ama uttered in a language or a form, that it produce substance. And so if it comes from a dead vessel, there is nothing there. The reason the vessel is dead, because of the trespasses of sin, the wickedness of one's own love, and the principles of one's which are non-principles, the principles that one thinks he or she operates in that gives them the superior quality or essence to whom they are. You're not worth a damn thing. And that's a fact. Your value is no different than the value of a dialect, a poor man that dies in his feces on the street it will rot just like that body so if you think that you have eclipsed the immortal in this corrupt flesh you are a damn fool and so when one understands that it gives them the balance of life we're nothing Without Yoshua Hamashiach. Yeah. I don't give a damn how much wealth you amass. The rich man goes down into the gates and the narrow streets of hell. And all of his wealth cannot redeem him. Ask Mr. Jobs of Apples if his riches can save him. And his philosophy of all the healthy remedies of his body. We all have an appointment. You think that you're going to be late, but you're going to die. No one wants to deal with that appointment. Nobody. From the oldest of simpletons to the youngest of the foolish. I can understand a child because Yah says foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. But an old fool, there's something different. David said when he was young, he did the things as a young boy. Now he has matured. 
he has maturated and so he he does the things now that are equal or it produces a great beauty to a wise old man wise zakhin an elderly mother This is a foolish generation. It is without knowledge. It is a generation without the conscience of Almighty Yah. Because there is no pulsating, burning desire for truth. Everyone is great, yet he is not great. Everyone has superficial superlatives or qualities about themselves that is superior to everyone else. Your flesh, man. Your damn fool. Your silly woman. He speaks that way to to reduce the usual down. To the level of non-existence of any substance, no bath of desire. I speak this way to show you how that the enemy has robbed you of the beautiful adi, the ornaments of his beauty. I speak this way, man, because where is the leya, the wreath of the beauty of your sure if he is your head? Where's your beauty to express even unto those? Uh, that may not have a husband, your strength man, to show them the excellence and the power of the strength of a man. We don't have a damn thing today. There's a reason why I will get to that. I like to lay the foundation and the footwork first. We have been dismantling this building, the first one we built when we arrived here many years ago. And through all of the dismantling as a Yosef and I, a tremendous laborious task, I noticed the foundation that it was solid, even in the midst of tremendous amount of rain that sometimes settled there. And as we ripped the carpet off, I noticed one little small crack in the midst of all of the turbulence, weathering things that it has had to absorb, just a small little teeter of a crack. And yet, to build it with greater strength is not going to take much. And when a man has the essence of the love of Torah, you find a man that he never alters his stance, his tenacity is sound. You find a bath of Tizayon that loves your a daughter that has integrity. She stands. She doesn't waver. She stands. You find a silly woman, everyone gravitates to her. You find a damn immature, silly man, everyone wants that association. I don't like silly men. I despise them more than I despise silly women. There's nothing like an odious woman, she stinks. And when a man is odious, he has nothing. He's a damn fool. That's the truth. Makes no difference whether you love me or not. We don't even love you. And so it makes me no difference. I am not teaching or preaching for any financial gain. Because there's not any here. You certainly are not going to send an offering. So it's not that. We must prepare ourselves. As the bride prepares herself for the bridegroom, as she waits with great anticipation, and she makes sure that her garment is spotless, is clean. 
We are people that have been spotted by the corruption of our own flesh. It is amazing that the Ukhut last night when she calls, she says, uh, you don't have to tell anyone who I am. Well, I replied, if you came today, they still would not know who you are. So what difference does it make? And she says to me, you have instructed me in things that were so right because I don't pull no punches. We're in bad shape. It's almost telling a man that think he is fit and up to run five miles. And hell, he can't even walk one mile that he can run five miles. Now, it's silly. It's almost telling a man uh, that he can lose 10 pounds when he can't even lose one pound. Now, let's get real. We don't want anyone that speaks to us in the reality of our time that expose the smallness of our depth. That's why the least of things overpower us and we're brought under the shackles of those circumstances of our own simple mind. I was speaking the other day, my Zahin, concerning this old woman here. When she came to me after your issue, and she was a spiry woman, she's getting old. She has been faithful. Never cost my heart one ounce of agony. And I know she's getting older. I see it in her face. She's not walking hot me or anything or with halt. When she came, she was a young woman. Sure she was. And there were dogs that were after her. But she maintained. It was the power of simple truth that kept her. And when all forsook her, she still stood. Daughter, grandchildren, son-in-law, sons, they all. I've never heard her moan and cry. What about mine? I've heard wicked men do that. I'm going to deal with something today. But I haven't heard this beautiful bath of Tizayon. She has stood. She has had the reserves of Yahweh because she has the ability to hear. And I find men that think that they are strong. Give me this Ima in the midst of battle. I said to Ach Yosef, she is a Gibbam. And with his dismay, he looks at me as though, hold up, Re'ang. I said, I know what Torah commands us that the uh, issue. She should not wear the garment, the adi of the ush. And he confirmed that quite so. I said, but the bath of Tizayon, like, Suzyan, Suzya, or Yudeth, or Ruth. They were Gerber, they were strong. When Naomi said, I will go to my mother and my kinsmen, Ruth said, I will stand with the one that has birthed the power of her heel in me. These weak men today. I said that her. Give her strength, my ark, is her shard, the sincere breast milk that you can draw from the breast of her sincerity and her application of her order daily. Well, you're not around her enough, neither am I around you enough. So you can tell me her disqualifications, tell me yours. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. And so I know that that Ima will never forsake me. 
I trust her strength over my natural mother's strength. I trust her beauty over my only natural sister. I trust her beauty over a natural father that I've seen one time in 58 years of my life. So I trust that beauty. You don't find that today. And men want to reprove and instruct. They have no power of discipline. You will not instruct me. I don't give a damn who you are. You might as well love me. You can't get into the kingdom. It is the truth, my email. You can't go into the kingdom. She has been the expression of what Yah command. The Zakhin that rules well, that rules in the Torah of wisdom, says he's worthy of double honor. I don't need no damn honor. That's what Yah commands. Let me see this I'm going to teach. There's a precious brother there in New Orleans. He calls me quite often. And he's always excited when he calls me. So he calls me the other day and then he calls again and says, Re'ak. I forgot to tell you that we have multiple dynamic teachings on marriage. And so I want to send you some teachings. I haven't had time to respond because of I'm busy during the day. And then when he said that, it reminded me... Uh, I don't celebrate any kind of anniversary or birthdays. I've really never done that. But it reminded me that on next week, one of the days, don't worry, I thought about my precious issue. We have been married 36 years. And I said in my own mind that, of course, I can teach on marriage. Because not only do I have the pedigree or the platform, I have some sense of wisdom of that. There has been a sustained relationship. It hasn't been hard for me. Every day has been beautiful. Even when she gets upset because I don't mind her getting upset with me. Hell, I get upset with me myself. Even when she doesn't even like my approach, it makes no difference. Because there is a great bond that nothing defies. And that is the pure achava and the kindness of Almighty Yah. I'm going to teach in a moment. It is her great kindness that have made me kind to her and love her. That has caused my faithfulness to stand strong and to love her with adoration and admiration. It hasn't been superficial. And no, I don't walk around and tell her I love you. You see the Akmikaya? I don't say that in the morning and in the evening. I don't say it all day. It is the power of that presence. And the fidelity of that presence, if that doesn't speak, then I don't give a damn. We get this false delusion from what the world says is love, and so we actually believe it's love. I'm going to teach today on kindness. It's going to be a difficult task to try to, to teach, especially from this platform, 
with what we were able to garner on Las Givants, there must be a change. Yet there was a concept in his teaching, Arzakhin Yaramiyad, that resonated throughout the teaching. It was a word known as chasset, a raha, a nacha. He spoke of the greatness of Yah's love, kindness, or we would say mercy, of this great kindness that is beyond the ability for the natural mind to conceptualize. And especially when there is over and over, when there is iniquity, Yoshua instructs us that we come to an epic time because of because this vile nature of iniquity, this unclean thing that is in our hearts, because of him, a defiance of what Torah commands, the mitzvah, the commandments of Yah, he says that it shall abound. It shall be persistent. It shall take strength in the bosom of the nation of Yisrael. It shall have its multiplicity, it shall increase. And because of in, of on, this vile attitude uh, toward what Yah commands us to do, uh, this corrupt attitude uh, to disavow our covenant, let everything that have breath praise Yah. Your shoe, your shoe. Huh? He is the strength of our bread, our covenant of shalom. Your shoe is his name. No other name. There's no other covenant of great shalom. But in that name of Yoshua Hamashiach. It tells us because this shall be of a great insurgent in the heart of man. He says that the love or the achava, the love kindness, the tenderness, the sincerity of one's love, he tells us that it shall wax. It shall wax. Rafa. It shall have this coldness. It shall wax. And he uses the words ka. It shall wax cold. Ka. 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 I know we read that, but we don't understand a damn thing. Because we're not giving ourselves over unto the lahag, the meditation on Torah. He says, uh, I'm such an ignorant man, I must search out the extreme. Uh, of the simplicity uh, of the wisdom of Yah's Torah. He said that the love of me shall wax. He shall refer. There shall be a despite and a despising in one's bosom. He said the love of me shall wax. It shall wax cold. That one shall be self possess that's what the word ka is ka. in our forefathers language they will say that she or isha ka isha she is called that what is self possess with their own spirit it is not the ruach of yah that they are self possess they are possessed with their own spirit it is not the ruach it is not the life and the power of the mind of Yoshua Hamashiach. They shall wax cold. They shall determine by their own adulation, their own speech of their own spirit, what is love. Above all, what is kindness. I'm going to teach from that today, kindness. It is one of the most beautiful Adi ornaments. That one can possess. I know that there are times that there are those that listen, and we may think that he is somewhat verbose. As I say to us, 
I've said it more than once or twice. I don't like to be redundant in that arena. I said that when I go places and people, they look and they watch. It is not because I possess anything of significance. But the Torah tells us why and the reason why. I'm going to read. We are the diadem, we are the jewels of the crown of all Maria. We are a sugula, we are a people that's special. Not because you got a damn Cadillac. You live in some kind of what man calls a mansion. It doesn't mean a damn thing. There's something in our Bayat that is greater than a Mercedes Benz. I don't give a damn what Jazzy G drives. That doesn't promote the strength of our worth, of our essence as to who we are. There's something greater than that. You think that Jazzy G, G or whatever loves P. Diddy? They don't know what love is. And we don't know a damn thing about love. We have the Ruach of Kar. I'm going to get to the depths of it. We self-indulge in our own spirit. And we are cold. We're cold with each other. There's indifference. We can sit in our loyals uh, and think that it's all right, but it's not all right. We think we're going to get by, you're not going to get by. Don't be deceived, you're not Mark. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap it. I don't care who we are. That's a fact. You may think you're getting by because you're young, you're old, but you're not getting by. You're not going to get by. And that's a fact. It's a fact whatsoever man saw it, you're going to reap it. Because of our love, and it is circumvented because of our own wickedness. It is not what I have done to you. It's what you have done to you. It is not what others have done to you. It is what you have done to him. You have not obeyed him. And so you become cold, you become cold, you become possessed with your own spirit. And it brings about smooth death, whereby your minds cannot see the wisdom and receive the wise counsel of God, and you die. You die prematurely before your time. There are those that are walking, they're dead. There's those that are alive, they have no liveliness in them. You're sure. You're sure, you're sure it's his name. You're sure, my great king. I'm going to sing like that. I'm going to dance with my Hamashiach until I can't dance no more. But I can't do it, I won't do it. And as long as he put the breath in my loins, I shall. I will. I'm not ashamed of him. Kindness. The ornaments of kindness. The Hasid of the Hasids. The Naham. Of Yah. And as I present Torah proof, we will, we will define the attributes as to how it is revealed to us in Torah. I say to us that my issue, even though people think I'm cold, they look at me and like he's a cold man. That's all right. I don't have time for the silly, foolish world. I really don't. 
And because there is no jocularity, he doesn't laugh and play. I'm not a jokester. I don't joke. When I never have joke. I'm getting too old to be a clown. Yorkshire is coming for his bride. She must have the ornaments, the adi. She must have the lilia, the wreath of his beauty. I want to begin here my Akshimri in the book of Shirak. A profound professor at the university in Yerushalayim. A man that his presence pronounce wisdom. As I said to Akio Safety the other day, we were talking about traditions of what we think was nurtured in what we call the church. He was discussing with me concerning a midweek service because we haven't had our Khitve Imant. So he asks, is this not the tradition of uh, what we call the church? We must understand that the Shabbat was not a time for this. Because every day at the bed of Yah, I will teach on that on Wednesday. Every day there was a sound of the alarm in the city at the Kohan taught. The elders gathered in the plaza. And they spoke with great volume of the power of Yah's Torah. No, the whole house has emulated what was birthed in Yerushalayim. Every day was a time of gathering and teaching. So when the Shabbat came, they could rest. And all of those teachings they had learned it was a time of rejoicing. Yoshua, Yoshua, yeah, singing and dancing and then when the kohan would read when the high kohan would read the gadol kohan when he would read it would cause the hearts of the people to come alive and after the day of Shouza, when the rock was poured out they taught every day from house to house preaching and teaching every day you think that the messengers when they went to the cities of athens they taught just on the shiva he has service every day, every single day. And among the true identity of Yisra'ya, we should gather every day. And there should always be a prepared zakhin to teach. To open the book and teach. Should always be one that uh, he has the strength of maturity of Torah when he opens his mouth. Uh, there's sound wisdom, but we don't have that today. I shall, my friend. So we should intrigue every day of the Shabbat as they would hear the Torah. No, it's not a tradition of the whole house. And I will prove it with the preponderance of evidence because they offered the offerings unto Yah. The Zaba every single day. That is Shekha, that is Wusha. So every day, every day. The kindness of Yah, the beauty of his Hasid. It exhibits one of the most powerful strengths and beauties that one could ever possess. See, my kindness or her kindness of her kindness to him. Uh, your Isha's kindness to you, or her kindness to you, uh, or her kindness to him, uh, it doesn't speak as to how kind I am to her, but it produces a great volume of beauty. Can I read here from Shirak? All right, I want to read from the book of Shirak. Chapter 36. I want to manifest the composition of kindness. It says in Shirak, chapter 36, I want to read two verses. Verse 22, it talks about a woman, an Isha, a woman, Stifra. It talks about her attributes, the ornaments of her beauty, 
in your sure Hamashiach. It says a woman's beauty. Yeah? This is the beauty of a woman. This is the beauty of a man. It talks about the gil or the gladness, the joy that resonates the street of that joy. It's a rejoicing. It is the gladness of the ponim, the face, the countenance. That's a woman's strength. And so I see that even, I don't like to utilize my issue because you all can get nutty. As we go places, there is something on the countenance. It is not how she dresses. It is not the filify clothing. It says that the tifra of a woman is the gladness of her countenance. And surpasses every human being's desire. That's what it does. But it brings about a strength to the man that is non-attainable any other way. The next verse. It says, if kindness or the, the great hasset uh, and, the, and the, the humility of Yah, if kindness and meekness uh, and humility uh, is in her tongue, if that is in the daughter's tongue, she has everything. It says, these attributes, listen. It says, if kindness, the hasset, the strength, of Yah's great love, if kindness, and it used the words and the or meekness, humility is in her tongue, then, see if that's in her, if that's in the woman. See, the world has taught you how to be a damn Jezebel, but if that is in the woman, then her husband, her ish, her man is not like other men that's a damn fact whether you buy it or not i will prove it out by ima dafna it says if these attributes are in her in her tongue then her man is not like every man in the market he doesn't look like every man his throat is not like every man that his man is not like every man we don't want to buy that that's the beauty of the essence of the all of the ornaments of a beautiful bath of Tezayon. If these three attributes are in her tongue, that a man is not like any other man. Does it say that? Her husband is not like any other husband. He's different. He has a strength that people wonder, what is that man's strength? He has a beauty that cannot be comprehended uh, by the physical dimension. I don't give a damn if you're five foot two or if you're six foot nine. Is that based upon those principles? Uh, it's a law that operates in the strength uh, of a warrior of a wife. Uh, and a woman. And if this be in her tongue, we got every kind of damn wicked thing in our tongues. Uh, every kind of shekel, every kind of damn lie, every kind of folly. But these are the the ornaments of a beautiful bath. It resonates in the gladness of a ponim. We are the woman of Yeshua HaMashiach. I was glad when they said unto me. Let us go. David said my heart was over abundantly satisfied. When the Torah command let us go into beards of Yah. It says that her man, it did not say her, it says a man. She is the ornament of a strong man. She is the beauty of the man's strength. And these little weak fledgling jackasses are what we call boys out here. They have no character of strength. A will man. It says that her husband, she is not like any other man. He doesn't walk like any other man. His strut, his beauty is not like any other man. That's why when a man finds a beautiful wife, he finds a jewel that is greater than any kind of damn riches. Yeah. You're getting too old now, old woman. Sure she is. We're going to keep you married to your shoe and love him until you die. Yeah. My iman. No, ma'am. 
Hallelujah. I want to read that again. I'm going to teach you today. You might as well drop off, my friends, because this is going to give us total resolution and show me how kind I am. And kindness is a great strength. It's not represented in the boldness of your tenacious tenacity of strength, your vigor, of your manpower. Physically, I think I can handle myself as well as any man. Believe me. I don't try to prove to the young brothers I'm as strong as them uh, or anything. But I got my own. I got what I need, all right? I said to my ox, Shibri, I said, Shibri, I got to get on the ball, man. He says, uh, I know you do in essence. He is such a smart mouth young man. You understand, old woman? He is so confrontational because he's honest. Yeah. Yeah. To say, boy, shut your mouth, all right? He said, I didn't tell you, but I'm already doing my thing. I said, okay, then, okay, I got you now. When there's a beautiful wife, we're not a beautiful wife for your sure. We are a damn slut. Even if we were a harlot, a whore, even a whore has kindness. I will prove it out. You know, when you go beyond that state of the chaset, of beyond the kindness, you are in a dismal state. I don't give a damn who you are. Can I read that again? It says, if kindness, and if also this and that, this great humility and humility is in her tongue, then her husband, her ish, her strength is not like other men. He doesn't walk like other men. When he walks into the marketplace, into the plaza of the Zachim, when he speaks, his voice resonates. It is the volume of his beauty of the tongue that has spoken to him uh, through the very loins of a kind, uh, humble, out of meek tongue of a ish. Sure. We have a bodacious society, don't we? And the woman understands it resonates in the beauty of her face and her gladness. Her countenance is glad. You don't even see that today among Israel. It's amazing. Hell, we get glad to go to Walmart, Dollar Mart, and Kmart. We're not glad to be around the people of Yah. We smile and laugh. We see a faggot dressed like some woman or some big butch bull dagger trying to hold on to another woman. We, ooh, we think that's humorous. Yet we doesn't rejoice with Israel. I shall, my friends. She's like no other woman. She is a high-yield woman. She's a woman of great maturity, of strength, and we must mature. He is not coming back for an empty tree as I was picking the figs yesterday. I'll be honest with you all. Those figs are high in the tree. And of course, there is an assault on them by the bees because they are delicious. And I said to myself, I must apologize to you all because I did not pick enough for everyone. I picked them for me to eat. Because when there is a fruitfulness, when you are sure, curse that fig tree. Yeah? It's one thing that figs do for me. I, I like them. You understand? It is one of the greatest purges that one can be purged by. So it is the truth of God. This is what purge us. It is by judgment and the fire of Torah that purge out the dross, the wickedness, this coldness, this car, this self-imposed spirit of your own mind. So when that is in the Isha's mouth, then a husband is like no other man. When that is in us, your shoe is not like Buddha. 
held to the world, Yeshua is like Buddha. He is not like Confucius. Because what's in our tongue today is not the law of kindness. It's the law of damn folly and lies, superficiality, insincerity. We might as well get real with me. We have our own our own self grandize spirit to elevate us and we don't elevate a damn thing when it comes to you we don't elevate the name of your shoe we don't lift them up it is the truth I found this to be one of the most juvenile generation it gets mad at everything. You say anything, you get upset. First thing, you know they don't have the, the Adi or the Lilia, the wreath of Yah's beauty. You know that you bath do not have the beauty of the countenance because when you hear it should make gladness. Don't do it because I'm talking to you. Toda, my friend. I'll get the house quiet, don't worry. Well, I don't buy that. Well, because that's in the book of Sharak. I wanted to bring my facsimile of the KJV because in that writing, these books were there. The book of Tobit, what we call the Apocrypha, and the first writing of Torah, they were there. So I will uh, turn our attention to a book that we're familiar with in name, but not in the substance of it. It is called Mishli or Proverbs, the Misha, the wisdom of Yah's mind speak. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 26. This is the power of a wise Isha. We as a wise woman of Yahshua. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 26. This is the beauty of the true Achuchim or the Achut of Yisrael. It says this about a virtuous woman. And a virtuous woman, we should be a woman that is high yellow, a woman of great strength. Huh? What we have, the joy, we have the gladness of Yah's joy. For it is the joy of Yahshua, the revelation of that testimony that is our koach, our strength. Isn't that so? So when there's great joy, does it not resonate from one's pony, one's face, and one's countenance? It talks about a high yield woman. It talks about a woman of great strength. It talks about a woman of uh, Tifra, that even uh, Shalom over all of those that he had, this one stood above uh, all of them. Proverbs 31, verse 26. It says that she put duck when she opens, when she begins to talk, when she opens, it says when she opens her fifth, her mouth, when she opens her mouth, it is with hukma. She talks with wisdom. She doesn't talk from her own car, this cold spirit. She talks with wisdom. And that's the way this woman should talk with wisdom. When she opens her mouth, is wise. When she opens her mouth, is hukma, is wisdom. She opens her mouth, she speaks with wisdom. And in her lofon, her tongue, in her tongue, it says, is the Torah, is the Torah, is the Torah, is the Torah. Torah of kindness. God even quad. In her faith. For out of the abundance of the laugh, the heart speaks. So what's in us? It comes out. We got silliness in us, we're going to talk silly. We're full of arrogance. Only a chayil woman, without the bride of Yeshua HaMashiach, only from that woman can come the Torah, 
of kindness. Out of her feff, her mouth, her tongue, her heart is governed by the hasits, the raham, the kindness of Almighty Yahweh. And there's one thing that kindness is composition. There's always what it consists of. There's always a steadfastness there. There's a strength there that is beyond the ability to measure. Because a man gets strength, your sure gets strength. His testimony in our bosom brings a great strength. That's why he is not like no other man. That's why they could say, we've heard no man speak like this man. Because he knew he had a woman by his side. That out of her mouth, the Torah of kindness was there. Her beauty was the gladness of the power of the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. It resonated in her face. You saw it in her walk. And when she walked through the market, a man was not like other men. He was different. I don't care if he was that tall, that tall, that tall. Me, no, I don't care if his shoulders were that wide or that wide. That's not the constitution of a man. These damn silly boys think because they have some physical tenacity, they're, they're strong and they're men. That doesn't make you a man. It makes you a boy. It's her beauty. That's why the im, the zachim, you elderly mothers, you better get busy. You continue to be mad as a damn mad dog. There's gladness on her countenance. As Yah tells us to do tava to those that despitefully use us, we're so wicked. She said, he said, they. It doesn't bother me what he said. They did. I'm doing what he said. I'm going to obey what Yah says. And I'm going to do it faithfully. You, you know, you all sh if no one knows that, the few of you should know that. Because I certainly could have amassed me some kind of wealth. And I've gone, I could have gone a way to garner me some money. A lot of women did every kind of wicked thing there is. Babies strewn everywhere. Yet in the midst of all that, Yah has kept me. Because from day one, I knew, although in all of my damnable stupendence of ignorance, my heart was set in the beginning. Before my mother conceived me, it was set. I have not changed one from day one. I've come to the understanding of Torah. When a wise woman speaks, she speaks with the law of kindness. 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 Well, she rebuked. You that have children, have you rebuked your children? Have you beat them on the side? They don't think you're kind, do they? But yet you're kind. The two little ones, they come, and often I may have something at my desk. She would always tell her little sister, don't beg. You know you cannot beg. Well, when they request of me, they're not begging. I don't care who the children are. And so the little one would say to me, Papi, give me some. I say, no. And she says, she'll lay her head on my chest and say, please, Papi, please. This one would say, you know you shouldn't beg. I'm not going to beg. But... If there by some chance he gives me some, I'll take it. And so I allow the little one to do it again. Can I have some? No. 
please, Papi, please. So I relent. Wasn't there a woman that went to the ruler and she consistently bombarded him with the cry, help me. And he says, in order for me not to be or to alleviate this disturbance, what is it that you need? This is what Yah is saying to Yisra'ya. He knows what we are in need of. So he feeds us from this book. He feeds us from Torah. You can let the world bewitch your damn mind all you want to. And the world gives you this delusion that everything is all right. It's not all right. The world doesn't give a damn about anyone and no one. They will chew you up and kill you. When you speak, woman, we are the woman. There's a law, a Torah of kindness that flows from that one. I will give you a harlot. Even a harlot understand kindness. You've got to be a dismal type of a wretched thing not to understand kindness. Can I give us an example? It's found in the book of Yahushua bin Nun. Chapter 2, Joshua. Joshua, chapter 2. Joshua, chapter 2. I want to begin reading at verse 7. You know, Shirak says that kindness is like a garden of Berakiah, of blessing. That's what kindness is like. As the old ones of my, before my generation, they taught us to be kind. To be kind to everyone. Because they had a God, although there were much tyranny and oppression, uh, they were kind even to those uh, that even did them wrong and vilified them. They knew how to respond kindly. Because that was their blessing. They knew before their maker they had done right as he commanded them. Kindness is like a garden of blessing. And the greatness of the hustle of the kindness of Yah, it endures forever. There is nothing that shackles kindness. I don't give a damn about your emotion when there is a, a Torah of kindness in you. You don't, do not abandon that because of some little emotional setback. You're not even a damn child. Because I watch babies and their kindness is still the same. I watch Ach Yosef bring the big wheel down for me yesterday. Uh, and the children, they stood back and they watch and they watch. And so my young friend says, Papi, what is that for? I said, well, I will turn it into some kind of apparatus of, uh, of playing on. Can we play on it? And they were just beyond ecstatic. I say, yeah, give me that childlike nature. They were just beyond pleased with it. Just a piece of old rusted metal. Had no value. You couldn't get five dollars for it at the junkyard. And so what I ordered, my masonry sand to lay blocks on next week. Well, Simeon got me the better quality, but that's not what I wanted. I wanted to dump them some for now, for them to play in. And so I dumped some sand there, and I said, Bonehead. He had one just covered up to the neck in sand. And they were just beyond ecstatic, the simple things. You see, kindness is a simple thing. And it should make the heart glad. It is the health of a nation. We are not healthy because we're wicked as hell. We can say all we want to all your damnable herbal remedies. It's not going to do one thing for you. There's a medicine from Gilead. There's a bomb of Gilead. We're trying to save this damn flesh. Yet we're not trying to exaggerate from the power of the tyranny of our mind. The testimony of Yahshua. Let me die in him. Let me be strong in his Torah. Even a harlot understand the beauty of kindness. A zana, a prostitute that interacts 
in the house of prostitution that sells herself not for pleasure but for the wherewithal to satisfy her pleasures. It is one that a zana is one that is in the occultic realm of the superficial thing of this car, this self-opposing or self-grandizing spirit that one thinks he or she has a great wealth of substance. We don't have a damn thing. And even the whore realized that there was one greater than the walls of Yericho, of the city. One that was greater, one's words that were more profound than even my own God power, the God of my belly, that it can speak. And here is the account of this affair in Yehoshua ben Nun, Joshua chapter 2, verse 12 to verse 14. As she said unto those that had come, Yah has sent those to spy out the land. She says this now. She says, now I beg of you, I intercede or I intrigue you, I make pala. She says, I beg of you, please. She used the word swear or shabbat to give me a covenant of promise. That is what the Shabbat is. It is the covenant of promise of Dabarim. It is the covenant that he has with us for his word to be fulfilled in us. To revive us and refresh us. She says, I ask you. She says, swear to me. By the great word of Yisrael, of Yah. She says, since I've shown you kindness. Is this not Rehab? Was she not the harlot? She said, I've shown you kindness. I've covered you with kindness. I have been kind. I've shown you kindness. That you will also show kindness to my avant. You tell me someone is kind to you and you don't have the ability to show kindness. You tell me the kindness of Yah, it caused men to repent. When the heart has been so seared and the conscience so seared, it cannot repent. And we're dealing with a damn foolish generation like that. We're dealing with those that are not outside of the camp, but those that have come in the camp. They're strangers. They are of a mixed multitude, Yisraya. They have a mixed ideology and concept of the power of Almighty. She said, even the horse said, I've shown you kindness. Just quite like the whore that washed the feet of Yahshua Hamashiach and the tears that she dried with her hair. We don't want to condescend. Because we have the self indoctrinated spirit, this car, we are cold as hell. It says the gladness of her countenance. It is the beauty of the woman we are glad. We are glad. It doesn't mean you go around skinning and grinning like a, a jackrabbit of a damn fool. It means that the, the entrance of the word of Yah, the Torah of Yah, into your eye and you are able to understand, to discern the spiritual power of that concept. It makes you glad. Yeah. No, you're not going to get this on the YouTube today. Who houses tomorrow? We we'll tell you how to be rich. Watch these bastards pimp these women like they pimping sluts. I watched the women get all emotional with their Japanese. <laughs> and the hound dogs of the boys, and they're looking to see which one, to see what color drawers are. Yes, they do. This is the one I'm after. And this is what people buy. Y'all commands us to buy the truth. You get that damn mess out of you. Yishirak tells us the beauty of a woman. Yeah. It is the gladness of a count. It's not because you got on some kind of damn popping ear bobs, some band around your head, silly woman. Yeah. Yeah. 
Not because you think you're Philly Fly Man or you, you got on some gator shoes. It doesn't mean a dumb thing. I shall, whatever preaching is. She says, show me kindness. I've shown you kindness. Will you not also show kindness to my father's house? She says, and I want you to give me a truth token. That's what kindness is. It is true. It is faithful. It is steadfast. It is strong. I'd rather have one true friend in life. Then to have a thousand associates that will not be true. If a man by chance in this life finds one friend, he has garnered a great measure from this life. You go to the damn Facebook, MySpace, everybody is a friend. Put me on your friend list, damn you. I would even waste my time for no damn trash like that. And they will kill each other. These are friends that Facebook, one goes to the town and you hear about her being murdered or him. These are friends. If a man finds one friend in his life, just one, just one, he has found a great gem and a jewel that cannot be measured. And so in order for you to even approach a friend, you must show yourself friendly and be friendly. I don't like too many men, all right? But I got a man's crush. I like men. Ain't nothing like a man. I marvel at men. I get quiet and just, man! There's nothing more beautiful than a man. Nothing. The Yah gives his issue the strength of beauty to make him different than any other man. Then his walk. His strides. He's different. And so when he goes, everybody knows that he's different. He's not like every other man. I will come on. He's different. I don't care if he's that tall. If he's that tall. Or as the little ones would say, Papi, I come to right here to you. And of course, when I look at the hand, it's reached that far. And all of a sudden, it's, I, will all, I will be there not long. I know you will. But right now, you're still right there. Not right there. No, no. Right here. So it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the cultivation of that strength in his bosom. And that's what our kindness does. And that's what procured the great blessings of Yah unto Yisrael. Our kindness unto Yeshua HaMashiach. That's why great is the power of Yah, the word, living testament of Yeshua. It's greater in us than even the spirit of your Yohka that is in the world. It's a worldly spirit. Even the whore understood the beauty of kindness. And she knew that that was a people of Yah. We cannot discern a damn thing. We don't know an ach and a chot. We'll be kind to a damn dog. But we will not be kind to the house of Yisraeli. We go on damn jobs and we obey everything that they say. And you better not talk back to the boss man because he will kick your arse out. It would matter of any kind of strength, he understand the beauty of the purpose of any kind of order. You don't go on the job and tell them what you're going to do, hypocrite. Yes, ma'am. Oh, oh, yeah. You don't call in and say, I don't want to come in today because I've taken authority. You don't. Don't come in tomorrow either. And by the way, bring our uniforms back. We'll hold your check until you bring them back. It is right. Yet we approach Yah in kind of way. Let me move on. She says, be kind to me. She said, give me a true token. What was the true token of those messengers? What is our true token? What is the power of the true token of us? Can I tell you? It's what come out of our faith, our mouth. It was their word. Their word. Say we give you something that is insignificant. What a damn string. Come on. They said to her, and that you will save, he said, and that you will be saved alive, and that you will be saved alive. 
my father, my mother, and my brother, and my sister, and all they that have, and deliver our lives from the death. And the men answered and said, our lives for your life. If you do not utter this, our business, and it shall be when Yah has given us the line, that we will deal kindly and truly with you. They said, we're going to do it. That's all we got to do. We got to do it. We got to deal kindly and with truth with each other. You just do it, I saw. You perform what kindness is. I don't give a damn how you feel. You do it. You fashion yourself. You fashion yourself daily. You work on you. You work on you. I got enough working on me, believe me. I do. Sweep around your own front door. We need true men of strength, Yisrael. Yah, please send the messengers. Raise up the young men. The warriors, the Geba, the men of strength. The word Geba signifies one that is strong, a strength, mighty, magnitude. They have the multitude of the Milchaya, the military power. And that power is wisdom, understanding, sincerity, dedication to Yah. You think about this place at one time, you couldn't find a seat today in here. Look what it has been known to. Oh, I could have kept them all here. I could have found a way to deceive them. Didn't want that. Didn't want the damn monies. Didn't want it. Now, T.D. Jakes will find a way for you, all right? He'll take your money. Even the harlot, even a fledgling prostitute has the ability to be kind. It's only that when the car, the coldness of one's self impose spirit, you don't know how to be kind. When one impose their concept of kind, when someone impose their emotions and their feeling, they don't know how to be kind. And we get angry as hell. And we think we're going into the kingdom. Oh woman, you stand. I will make sure that you're buried right. I may go before you. I don't want you going nowhere. You understand? Just stay quiet. Don't get crazy on me. Stay quiet. I don't care if the young women don't like. Whether it's Raphael, what you say. Keep talking to them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, ma'am. Because you must stand before Yah. If all this He has put in me, if I don't share, then why am I? I want to move quickly because I want to finish today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They said that when our Abba, when Yah gives us the land, they say we will deal in verse 14. We will deal kindly and true with you. That is what we must possess, Israel. We must have kindness is a love that is steadfast. How many of you all have children? I've never birthed a child. Have no children out in the world. Don't have any. But I know, I, I know you never had to spank her. You never had to do that. Don't do that to me, old woman. You've never had to spank her. No, sir. You did no more. Nobody would think she ever got a Swack, squack. Okay, I know it's true now. And yet that kindness was steadfast. That kindness brought about strength, understanding. And so I won't be this the child. Just don't do it before me. None of you, okay? Take them and beat them. But don't do it in my presence. I don't care who you are. You understand? Don't do it in my presence. Just take them out. Go somewhere where you can shut the door, then rat it hell, all right? And if I'm around, just wait until I dismiss myself. How about that? My woman always said, well, what should she do? I say, woman, I'm telling you for the last time. Don't do it around me. I don't care how bad a child is. They're not bad. It's just foolishness bound in them. Hell, we are foolish, than, more foolish than they are. 
Foolishness is bound in how the rod of correction straightens them out. Just don't do it around me. You understand? Don't do it around me. There's nothing that is like the kindness that is true. He said, we will be kind and truly. The word imams. We will deal with you according to the beauty of yours. Raham. His kindness. Raham is the kindness that there is no linguistic, no language or speak that can express the kindness of Yah. Nothing. It has no definitive. It is only Yah's kindness. How do we understand it? We just do. And we act in a true nature that Yah commands us to do it in. To be true. You know those saying, man, come on, dog, be true to yourself. We used to say in the days, you got to be true to yourself, man. You can't be true to me without being true to yourself. We go back to those days. That was a saying in the day. You got to be true. See that old man, he's old man, he's in here. He said, you got to be true to yourself, player. That's the way we talk. And if you're not true to you, you will never be true to anyone. They say, we will deal with you with kindness and truth because you know this is our land. And this is the covenant. You take this little valid purple string and can you imagine the chaos and yet? They could see that, the dust, and all of the commotion. You tell me they saw that? No, it was the covenant of their mouth. That's what kindness does. Uh, he has given us the covenant. I will show us. That's what the bread is. is a covenant uh, that is steeped in the shalom, the confidence, and the comfort of Yah. It is his covenant. Uh, it is what he has done, given unto us, that give us comfort. Uh, even when all the world is against us. I was talking to my Zakin, our Akia Akob down there. Jacksonville, my heart was overwhelmed for his reporting to me. The tears just began to flow where I couldn't talk. I said, talk to you later. Bye. I said, talk to you later. He gave me the resolve, preacher man. There's nothing that anyone or anything can do to prevent me. I know my course. I know when things end. And as they say, put it in the hands of Yah. He will make it all right. We need to sing that. Put it in the hands of Yahweh. He'll make it all right. Put it in the hands of Yah. He shall put it in the hands of Yah. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's right. Yeah. There's an appointment to us all. You better learn how to be kind. You do kindness. You just do. She said, I've shown you kindness. Kindness is an operation that is seen. Show me kindness. A whore? And we are worse than a whore. God is quiet, huh? It is one thing about the great kindness of Yah. And this great proclamation that he proclaims to us today. When Yah spoke unto Moshe, it tells us here in the book of Shemoth, Exodus. Chapter 34, verse 5. Exodus. When he began to proclaim the identity of whom he is, what he is, and his power. It says in the book of Shemoth, Exodus 34, 5. And Yahweh descended in the cloud and he stood with him there. And he called on the name of Almighty Yahweh. And Yah passed by before him and he called out 
This is what y'all did. He called out and proclaimed Yahweh, Yahweh, the Almighty One. He says, you are Rahum. He said that you're compassionate. He knew that Yah was compassionate. It is the beauty of this woman that shows her state of compassion. Her great strength, her steadfastness. The strength of her care, her love. A mother whipped the child's ass. And the child doesn't think it's compassion. But it is rachum, it is compassion. We think because someone will instruct us in discipline and counsel. We don't think that they are compassion. But yet, he said that you are compassionate. You are rachum. You are the one that is great. And your kindness is beyond my expression. He says, and also you are Hanu. You are one, Yah, that is, that you show us favor. Kindness always show favor. It always favor others above you. It always does for others before you. Has not Yah done for us? That's what kindness is. He says, I know that you are benevolent. I know you are kind. He said, I know that you are long-suffering. He says, and you have abundance. And not only that, abundance are rob in kindness. We are... We have very insignificant pedigree of kindness. He said, your abundance in kindness. You're abundant in kindness. And not only in kindness, but truth. They said to the whore, we will deal with you kindly and truly. Yah is abundant. He is robbed many, much, exceeding the ability numerically to lay content to it he's abundant in kindness because we have the spirit of Kha. mama she didn't think you were kind when you would put the switch on at time she would go pout i know because i got it put on me and go pout <laughs> she don't love me i would say that often but I bless my Abba in all of my ignorance. It was something after all of that was over with. When I wept and cried, you know what I will always do? I will find some way in my mother's home to do something. Clean up. I'm an excellent cleaner. Now, I, I love things immaculately in order. I, love, I don't like nastiness. I don't like to see things out of order. I hate that. I love for things to be clean. I'm not just talking about clean. I'm talking about immaculately clean. I don't like no junky house. I don't like, I look, I don't care what I do. I want things to be orderly. I think, Ak Yosef, we, we took the hard part. We should have taken the roof off, you and me, and let them clean up and cut those blocks. That was some hard work. It is, yes, that was hard. For days I had a bruise on my thigh. I said, Mama, ouch! Hard work. Hard and dirty. One day at a time, sweet your sure. I know how to calculate things. I said, This is a two day job. I don't want to discourage my friend. So we get it done. Let me do the work. See, that's what kindness. Can I show an example? I'm going to finish today. I was cutting those blocks. It was hard work. And so Shimbri, here this man has been working all day, has his babies. He had the little one with him. She loves being around daddy. So he comes and say, preacher man, let me give you a hand. See, his kindness spoke. So his kindness reciprocated kindness. I said, no, take the babies and you take care of them. And you can only cut 
one cut and you had to sit down that saw that was a monster man heavy it was nothing to play with so I said to him my friend you take care of them I got it well there was a long oxymion he came and he's watching me and like he said let me do that I said no sir I got it I say please oxymion I don't mind because I know his kindness and his labor I said I, I got it all I was wore out I was wore out to the bone you hear me and so he's watching he says just, just let me I said no sir I got it I said I got two more to do I didn't even know I would hold up for the other two so I cut that one side I said oh my god I was wore out I could feel it all over my body that's hard work and so what Oxymion did, he just said, let me see that. Well, of course, I wasn't going to at that moment, my friend. I was not going to relinquish on his kindness. I said, let it be. Because I didn't have the strength, honestly. It was hard work. That's kindness, reciprocate kindness. One thing a man taught me many years ago that has not been kind to me. I've even visited him three times. And the last time he shut the door at my face. He says to me, my friend, I want to be kinder to you than you are to me. And as a young man, I learned something that day. I said, I will take that mantra and wear it because it's right. I learned from men. I have learned from men. I learned from the Achim. I'm not an audacious, stupid, prideful fool. I learned from your beauty. I learned from your submissiveness. I, I learned from your words. I learned from, from the wiseness of your speech at such a young age. I didn't have what he had uh, at that age. He's got a wife and babies. Uh, we're on the way. And we think we were. Zakain said that. Sometimes they're old men. They don't think that we're wise. Well, I didn't have what he had when I was his age. Because he has learned things... Uh, at that age that I didn't even know of, I'm learning them now and teaching them. It's a stupid old man that thinks like that. It's not even a man. Because a man understands the beauty of a man and the strength. As Eyo with Illa, he was much, he was probably a hundred years younger than them. But he, they listen. Moving on here. He says that Yah is abundant in kindness and truth. Look what he does in verse 7. He keeps life or hasset for thousand. Forgiven iniquity. Uh, did not I begin because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Uh, that iniquity must, that of all must be forgiven, Yisrael. Forgiven iniquity and trespass and sin. Uh, and that will by in no means clear the guilty. He's not going to let you skate. He's not going to allow you to say, because I was sick. Or oh, I didn't know how to, to be kind. Yah is abundant in kindness. He shows that every day. When he awakens us this morning, when he calls you to get up out of your bed, you tell me you can't show the power of that to your neighbor, to love your neighbor as yourself. You're a damn jackass. You're less than a whore. You're not even a damn whore. Stupid Jezebel. Even a damn Jezebel knew better. You're not even worth Oh, that did it ever whore. When the whore of Mariam Magdalene sat at the feet of Yahshua, she cried. His kindness overpowered her. And even those that superficial kindness say he doesn't even know what she is. He says, you boys, you don't know how to love because you think you're great. You think you got much. She's crying like this because... She knows that much has been forgiven. When you understand the mercies of Yah, you know He's forgiven you much. So it's not a great task for me to forgive an ach and a hot. What about those that I've left from here? I have nothing against them. But I certainly, if she commit adultery on me, as she has come to the way of truth and knowledge, and to think that 
the embrace is going to be the same. It's not going to be that way. I can never. Because I've lived right with her. I've lived faithfully with her. And for you to go outside of that on me? No. I'm not going to buy that. I'm not going to be joyful to see you. My heart not, it's going to get elated when I see you. I don't want you around me. That doesn't mean I'm forgiving her. No, it just means that I don't want to be in her company. Go on. You're not even a heifer. So stay like a heifer. Stay clean and pure. That is a true son. God says that in no wise you're going to be held guiltless. Does he say that? He said, you're not going to get by. You think you are. He says, I keep my life of the husset and the transgression. He said, by no means will I clear the guilt. He said, visiting, this is what he does, visiting the iniquity of the father upon the children, upon the children, children, to the third generation. If you realize what you're doing, Yisraya, with that seed of Ovon, that iniquity, because iniquity shall abound, you'll let iniquity supersede Yah's great kindness. You cause a curse upon your grandbabies and your babies after them and your babies after them and that baby and that baby. That's what you cause. And you think you're being all kind because you embrace them knowing they're full of hell. Uh, instead of telling them you're wrong, daughter. You're wrong, baby. My grandmother, even though they didn't know Yah, they would tell us when we were wrong. There were people that were religious, but they would tell us when they were, we were wrong. They didn't know the power of Yah, but my mother, even though I would say to her, how can you tell me I'm wrong when you do what I'm doing? You tell me I'm in bad shape, but you do the same thing. I know it, baby, but you're still wrong. We can't argue with you. He said, I'm going to visit that spirit upon your babies. We got to get right. We must get right. We must make ourselves ready to meet our maker. Yeah. Nobody, you've done you are wrong. Nobody's done you unkind. You're unkind to you. There's nothing one can do to me to make me abandon the Torah, the law of life. Yeah. Nothing you can do. Nothing you can say. It's amazing how you charge others. You never charge you. Boom. Everybody's wrong. You're right, honey. You're man. Everyone will see his strength. That's what Shirak says. Her man is like no other man. I don't give a damn what you say. That's what the book says. Her man is like no other man. That's what it says. That's what it says. He is not like other men. I don't want to be like other men. I want to be like the man. And the man of that power in that man, this man, that man, that man, that man, that man, that man, that man, whatever man. I know that he's a man for one reason. Can I tell you? Because I can see the power of his head. I can see the strength of his testimony, which is Yahshua Hamashiach. Yah is the head of Hamashiach. Hamashiach is the head of man. Man is the head of woman. And the woman's beauty, her strength of her breast, her titty milk, her sat. That even though this is not my biological mother, I don't drink milk. But I can draw on the sincere. As Saul talks about the sincere milk. Or the Bezorak, the teaching of Yoshua HaMashiach. Or the sincere dedication and application of Torah in our life. I can draw from that to give me strength. And drink that milk. No skim milk. This milk put fatness on your bone, Yisrael. Hallelujah. 
I want to be right. I want to do right before you. We're not going into the kingdom any kind of way. Yah has shown us abundance of kindness. He gives us abundance of Ima truth. We understand the power of truth and we are made. He uses the word made, Asa, to form you again, to fashion you, and to rid you of those things that have caused a handicap upon you. And he fashioned your mind by his breath, by his mind. We don't have that, then we are the most underprivileged people upon the face of the earth. If we don't have that, woe unto us all. Drink, eat, and just die. Just eat your life into oblivion, drink. I mean, still do whatever you want to. Because this has no value at all. And I'm certainly not going to live in a proper state if I know that this is the end of it. And that's it. So go for it. I'm going for all in him. You can go for that out there. I'm going to keep him. Hallelujah. For one reason, we don't understand kindness. We don't understand the process. How we get kindness. How we develop that. If there was one that could speak, it was Kefa. This one has loved much. And because this one loves much, because one has been forgiven much. When one doesn't think that one has been forgiven much, they don't know how to love. When one thinks that he or she is is kinder than others, they don't know how to be kind. That's just a fact. And if there were one can speak with such resounding approval, it is Kepha. First, Second Peter. Second Peter chapter 2. Chapter Peter, I'm sorry. Second Peter chapter 1. This is what Peter says now. Kepha. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 5. He uses the word beside and beside this. He says, I want you giving all effort, all diligence. Uh, he says, look, I want you to do this. He says, I want you to add. Uh, I want you to rob, to multiply. I want you to add to your imuna, your faith, your omuna. Uh, he says, I want you to add gibra. Uh, I want you to add virtue. So we must add strength to our faith. He uses the word virtue or gibra. I want you to add strength. That's why a gibra man, he is a strong man. That's why a woman that has added to her faith, she has the gibra. She is strong. She is mighty. She is steadfast in the kindness of Yah. Her appreciation of his kindness supersede any of her battles. He says... Beside all this, I want you to give diligently above all things. I want you to give great effort with great desire, great passion. I want you to give all diligent. I want you to add to your imuna. I want you to add gibberah. I want you to add virtue. I want you to add strength. A great mighty power of strength. You add that. When you add one plus one, it is a process of multiplying, isn't it? So when you understand the state of your being and your mind, you began to add. You began to add, first of all, to your imuna. You trust Yah. You believe Yah. You're apprehensive as to what He says. Your mind is given over unto the Lord. Because the only way you're going to add to, to your imuna, to your faith, you must hear the Torah of Yah. And if you hear the Torah of Yah, it makes you strong. When you're hearing every kind of damn wicked thing, when your mind is given over unto folly and laughter and silly stuff, you cannot add to your imuna, your imuna. He said, I want you to add to your imun, I want you to add strength, to be strong. I want you to solidify your faith, your imuna, in the power of the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. He says, and also when you get to the state of Gebra, I want you to get knowledge, not da'at, to discern, to understand what you have, the applications, how to use your strength, and how to take advantage of that challenge that is before you. You just can't go to the gym over there and try to lift 500 pounds. You can't do it, Yisrael. I don't care how strong you think you are. I'm talking about physically. 
You just don't go there and lay down and, and slap six of those big plates on the bar and say, I can get that. You don't do that. It's just a fact. No doubt about it. So in order for you to add substance to one's life, uh, there's a process of nurturing oneself. And as you nurture yourself, then uh, you get stronger. You become more mature. He said, these are the things you need to add. Why? Because that's why we're falling. That's why we don't have a damn thing. I say it that way. We have nothing. You must add uh, Gibra of virtue to knowledge. Uh, verse 6, uh, he said, as to knowledge, I want you to add uh, hukmah. I want you to add to your knowledge, I want you to add temperance. Uh, that's what temperance is. It is the skill mindset to operate uh, within the confines uh, or the avenue of that instruction uh, that you have been given. When one has temperance and balance, you get uh, a schematic or an instruction to put something together. You say, man, it takes too much to put it together like this. So you tend to discard the instruction, don't you? Then you find yourself with all kinds of extras and screws uh, and everything that all of those parts are necessary for the strength of that apparatus. I have done it like no other one, believe me. And so the easiest way is to take time and start where? Step one, isn't it? Lay out all the tools in an orderly fashion. Step one, step two, step three, step four. You will find these are the steps that Yah gives us here. He says, and to your da'at, your knowledge, your power to discern, I want you to add hukma temperance. I want you to add the skillfulness of wisdom, the prudence of wisdom, so you can be jurisprudent. You can understand the contents of Torah and the way that the Torah operates. He says, and not only to that, I want you to add unto your temperance. He says, I want you to add yakul, patience. The power to persevere, the power to prevail, the strength to overcome. It is the smaller things that break us down, isn't it? He says, I want you to add yakol. He says that in through your patience, I want you to add the living substance of all this you have learned to let it become alive in you. I want you, in the next verse, he talks about guarding that which is of Yah, the Shabbat. Take it into mind, that which Yah has granted unto us. He says, and also, as you guard Torah, he uses the word brotherly kindness in verse 7. He says, and you add to brotherly kindness, you add a Chava, 2 Peter 1, 7. You add to brotherly kindness. You add, so you got to be kind in order to add love. And you add to brotherly kindness. He said, you add to that brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, you add a chava. You must add love. You cannot be kind and not add the element of love continuously. You're not kind. It's just a superficial lie. You add to your brotherly kindness, love, the Havavya. Then he gives us a sure word here. All of this is sure. He says, for if these things, if these things, these attributes of Yah's great kindness be in you and abound or they multiply. If they rob, if there's increase, you see it in the gladness of your countenance. You know, people think I'm not glad because I don't, when I go places, they don't, they don't speak to me. They speak to her. Hi, she, hi. <laughs> they don't speak to me. Honestly, when they see me, they may do this. And that's the way I respond. Especially women, I don't like messing around with women. I just don't. So when they see her, I'm telling you, they smile. Because she has a gladness of countenance. And they just look at him and say, he's not locked around here. What is that? How do you put them two together? I wonder if he's mean to her. And he doesn't treat her kind. I wonder. Hmm? So when they look at me, I don't respond. I just, if they 
do that or they say how huh? I'll give them the nod we don't have time to be flirtatious and flirting I don't have time for that I'm in a battle for my nefesh Shirak says her man is not like no other man it's either it's a law or it's the truth the kindness of the tongue of the law the Torah of kindness comes out of her mouth It's the kind words that drive away the wrath. Woman, you can have my heart. Just don't be smart mouth with me. Don't get nasty with me. Just don't do that. No. I give you my shoes. I give you my jacket. But don't talk smart to me. <laughs> don't do that. You got everything. I, I, I do like uh, Shimshon and Samson. Give you my strength. Uh, but don't get smart mouth with me. Don't do that. Don't mess with me that way. You will never have no problem with me. You do that, you're in trouble. How about that? Hallelujah. Yeah. You get no amen, but that's all right. He says, for if these things be in your bound, he said, they make you that you shall neither be barren, neither nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our master, Yeshua HaMashiach. Now ask yourself, look at you. Don't look at me. Now ask you, are you very fruitful in the knowledge of your story? Ask yourself that. Don't worry about how fruitful I am. Are you fruitful? Yeah. Have we honest with ourselves? You've how fruitful you are. Ain't much there. No depth there. No whatsoever. I said about Zachim, Yarameya, uh, I mean Zachim Ahalaya, we were coming over. I said, one thing that Evangel Hussein will always say to me, as we were gathering in this little office there that we were gathered before service, he would always say to me, as we will have meetings, I will lead the meetings that we will go to. He would always say this to me, he said, Brother, let's go get the devil. Let's get him. So I said to my Zachin this morning, I said, uh, let's get him. Let's get the devil. I said, let's go get him. He said, preach him out. He says, not only get the devil, but get me. I said, I will be faithful. Don't worry. He said, not only the devil, my friend, get me. I need you to get me. Get me. I like that kind of warring spirit. Hmm. He said, not only the devil, but get me. Get me, preacher. Make sure. I said, oh man, don't worry, I'll be faithful. You know I am. Show me what. I need to pull up in. If these things be in us, we shall. Are we truly fruitful? Don't even respond. You tell me you're that fruitful. Stop it. We are barren. And when that which is barren, it cannot produce life. There's no life in us. That's why we need the mind of Yeshua. There's no life of kindness in us, Yisraya. In the world, they say, this is my boy. And then they sell him out. He goes to jail. He dies. This is my girl. And yet you're sleeping with the one that she calls her man. You little dirty heifer. Now you're a dirty whore. He used those kinds of words. Well, hell, what the Jazz Z use to pollute your children's mind. And, and the fatback boys and, and, and the bumping king and the twerking whores. Talk to me. What do they use? I'm not polluting your children. I'm not polluting you. You allow them to do it. I will not. You pollute your own mind with your own kha, your self spirit. The kha because you're cold because it is self that represents self. It is not the power of the man of Yeshua. It is not the breath of life. That the Ruach HaKodesh. Yeah. 
That's a fact. If these things abound in you, they will make you that you shall neither be barren, neither shall you be unfruitful in the knowledge, in the da'at, the power to discern, to know, to understand the power of the truth of Yahshua. We don't understand that. That's why we fall into sin. That's why we falter, we give up. That's why we are people that are so discouraged about what? What in the hell are we going to get but toils of labor and death? What, what do you think we're going to get out there? You can have it. No one here stops you. No one here compels you. Now, you go on out there. Hallelujah. I'm going to just wait until my change comes. It's coming. I heard from one this morning called, left a message, said, I listened to a message that was spoken from Joshua, the profoundness, the preciseness of it. It was just beyond comprehension. It was right. Truth is always right. Truth is always right. That's why we should love them that stands with truth. That's why we should care for them. Although my mother, I still love my mother in the concept of my knowledge, what she taught me about love. I didn't know what love was. I didn't understand the commands of Yah. I had no love for the commands of Yah. But there was an association of an attachment there with her. So I could only express that what I was taught. But it wasn't love. It wasn't love. No one can love without uh, here it is love. That we shema, we guard the commands of Yah. You're a liar. I don't care what you say. You don't love. You cannot add love to love kindness because we don't know how to love. We're not going to get by. We're not going to escape. Why? Because judgment began first at the house of Yah. And it began first with the people of Yah worship the wicked and those that are unrighteous appear before Yah. He's given us much of simplicity. You're going to sell that for the coronation of your own wickedness, your own car, your own flesh? You do kind to everyone. We have opportunity. You do kindness to every man. Especially Yisraya. Let me move a little farther, all right, Yisraya. It's one thing that the only way we're going to have a true covenant of kindness, we must die out to self. And we got the value of Yisra'ya more valuable than us. I want to read quickly here from the book of Shemul, yeah, 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel, you move quickly. 1 Samuel chapter 20 verse 14. This is with Yothan and David, the covenant of the Brit of Shalom. Look at how beautiful this is. When you truly love your ark, when you, when you esteem them higher than you, it's easy to, to orchestrate a covenant of such great kindness. It says here in 1 Samuel 20, 14, he says unto David, and you shall not only while yet I live, show me hasid or kindness. You shall not just show me kindness while I live, because I know that the hand of Yah is upon you. We have no power of da'at because we have not added to the process that Yah tells us to add to our knowledge, the kindness and the wisdom of Almighty Yah. So you don't know who is of Yah. You don't know those that are, are the true messenger of Yah. But this man knew David was the king uh, that was elected by the hands of Yah. He says, and while you live, you show me kindness. Show the kindness of Yah that I die not. But also, you shall not cut off your kindness uh, from my house forever. He said, be kind to the house of Shaul. You shall never cut it off. You shall never. Don't think you're going to kill Shaul and come to the word of kindness, David, 
and tell him you killed Shaul and then you're going to live. It's not so. You're not going to kill the servant of Yah, the simple one of Yah, and go before Yah and think your prayers are going to be heard. It's not that way, Yisrael Yah. He said, this is our covenant of kindness. I will show that same kindness to the house. He says, no, not when Yah has cut off the enemies of thy wheat. Everyone from the face of the earth, he's going to cut them off. He says, So Yachan has made a covenant with Bea David, saying, Let Yah even require it at the hands of David's enemy. He made a covenant, a covenant of shalom, that I have treated you kind. I've treated you like my own brother, beyond that. He said, I know that you are the one that Yah has raised. Hallelujah. Can every person go out and run 50 miles or 20 miles? Can every woman go out and jog 10 miles in the morning or every man? So there are different degrees of strengths and abilities. So do I dispose of, I'm angry at him because he can do that? No, I draw from the motivation of his strength. So I can't run 10 miles, but I sure can walk a mile. I'm using that as an analogy. So I draw from the ingredients of his strength or her strength to motivate me. And so because David was kind to him, he was kind to him. And it developed into a great kindness. And they added to their kindness love. They added to their kindness great love. And they loved one another. Let me tell you something. I don't give a damn what you think, Yisraya. If I'm not kind to him, if I'm kind to him, I think I am. And not kind to him, I have no damn kindness. If I'm kind to him and not kind to you, I have no damn kindness. And you think because one has this superficial thing you call kindness, and they call themselves kind to you and not kind to them, that's a damn deception, Yisraya. They don't know kindness. You must add kindness. You must add love to kindness. You don't know what kindness is. You're not strong. You're not steadfast. We're not. I will, man. Don't mess with me. And kindness reciprocate kindness. And someone has done you wrong. You show them kindness, it breaks their heart. You allow your spirit, it creates a damn commotion uh, and emotionalism. Uh, it's wrong. That doesn't mean someone doesn't straighten you out in your cro crooked, corrupt ways. Uh, they had a covenant of kindness. I don't care how kind you think you are to me or I am to him. If I'm kind to him, I'm not kind to him. It, it's not worth a damn. It says, add brotherly kindness or brotherly love. We must have brotherly kindness. My achim, there must be a kindness. There must be a consideration. It must be an achim, a sisterly kindness. And then you add to that kindness. Once you learn how to be kind, you can learn how to love. You learn how to be compassionate, you can learn how to love. I've treated you kindly, the harlot said. I know your Abba is going to give you the land. So when he comes back, just be kind to my house. I'm going to tell them day and night what they must do. I'm going to explain to them, this is the land of the people of Yah. He has given it unto them. And I have a covenant from their bosom. I have a Shabbat. I have a swearing of an oath. And when they come to this land, they've given me this threat of the Kulur of Yah. That this house and all that's in it shall escape. Not because they were right. Not because the harlot was right. Kindness is just kindness. When you're kind, you sh it reciprocate kindness. I don't go out in the world and try to uh, mistreat people. Uh, I'm not going to talk down to them. I'm not going to show them I have an, of an excellent quality of substance. Uh, I don't even talk to most people. I let them talk. Uh, I hear you. Talk on, man. 
Why is it that matter? Are you not? To, well, I've been around a while. I know what I'm saying. I know you do know what you're saying. Keep talking. At times it's best to answer fool according to their folly. Just let the fool talk. My friend, I got to go. I got to run. You can talk. I can listen. Work. Just, 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 just follow me. I got to work. I got to get this job done. I hear you. That's nothing like kindness. Brotherly kindness. That's nothing like it. That's nothing like a brother being kind to each other. It's not like an hope being kind to one another. Even when your emotions uh, damper your countenance, you're still, you're still a kind. There's nothing like it. It's just beautiful to be kind to someone. You are kind to us and all of our sin. What have I done to sin against you so grievous? What has she done to you to sin against you so grievous? That you can't be kind. Kindness is a volume of expression. I want to be kind, man. Be kind to you. I don't want to be unkind. We can examine our hearts and see how kind we are. Something is wrong. Okay, you give me something that is, the whole book is relevant. Jao speaks in Colossians. Colicia, Colossians chapter 3. This is what I'm going to do today. Colossians chapter 3 verse 12. I'm going to remind you and put you in remembrance. Colossians chapter 3 verse 12. He says, put on therefore. Are we the ball here? Are you the elect of Yah? I am the elect. So I know that this you got to put on. You got to put on, you got to, you know, you got to let it be, be stored in your bosom. He said, put on, therefore, as elect of Yah. He says, oh, you need to put on, listen, chadosh and beloved. He said, bows of, I use the word mercy for experience, but that is the hasset or the naham of Yah. He said, put on mercies, and then he says kindness, doesn't it? We can't put that on. You can put on kindness. You can put on kindness. You put on a damn ugly face. You put on a damn ugly face. You go on the stone, you put on a nice face. Huh? Hi. I'll never forget my Zuck and Chimri. I was in the stone one day. And this woman, and she was one of the managers of the store. And she had this disposition I didn't like. And I'm looking at this woman and I'm looking at her like this. Like, what's your problem? And she looks at me, she sees my discontent with her. My ignorance looked at her. And so she walks over to my wife. And she says to her, I said, how does she know this is my wife? She walks over to my wife. And she says to her, I'll never forget, she says, she didn't say tell your man. She said, tell your husband. I had such a bad night. Such difficulties. And so when my Israel told me that, I was smitten. It broke. Should. Then my observation, her attitude, her attitude was still wrong. Don't justify that. But just that alone, it caused my heart to sympathize with the woman greatly and to have a great compassion. That's what kindness does. And we need to put it on. You put on your damn fakeness. Then put on the beloved. Put on the beloved, the only, the only. We are the beloved, the only. Put on beloved. Put on bowels of kindness. Let your bowels burst out with kindness. Let your bowels, I watch the children. I don't care what their adversities are, what their trials are, how they get upset with each other. They are still bowels of mercies. 
They're still caught. I don't care how they upset with each other. I don't care if this one called this one that and that one said this or that one. This one mocked that one. There's still a union and there's still a unity among them. You are silly. I watched them. Baby, she said that. Okay, don't say your play. Come on, Saria. Come on, Kayla. Come on, let's, let's run. Come on, Adasa. These damn juvenile, immature individuals. We must put things on. Have you ever seen someone put on their anger? Have you ever done that? Ah, don't answer. Hell, we do it all the time. We put on our discontent, our dissatisfaction. We put on anger, we put on lies. Now let us as to be love of the more here of Yah. Let's put on bowels of mercies. Let's put on the bowels of kindness. You put on the darkness of your countenance, your dark face, your wicked attitude. Now put this on. He said, put on humbleness of mind, condescend, and be meek. Anna, put that on. Learn temperance, suffer along with each other. Did he tell us to cool? Forbearing. Forbearing one another. And when you do that, then you can so lack. You can forgive one another. If any man has an oath, a call against any, even as Messiah gave, he's forgiven you, hasn't he? I know I'm a wretched thing. I'm glad of his kindness, his forgiveness, as he has forgiven you. So you forgive Israel. You ach, you haunt. And above all that, when you've done all that, you done it all. When you've done all, you can't go beyond that. He said, above all these things, put on a hub. Put on love. He tells us to put it on. Nothing to bestow that, to allow that spirit to be bestowed in your mind. Put on love, which is the bond of perfectionists. That is told me that is what perfects us. When you love someone, it perfects the bond. It perfects you. It perfects them. That is the bond of perfection. And then after we've done all that, we let the shalom of Yah rule in our lavim, and to the which you are called in one body, we should have who that we should be told that we should be thankful unto Yah. Let the word of your sure Hamashir dwell richly in all wisdom. See, that is where we have missed the point. We don't allow the word of Yah to dwell in us in all wisdom. It must dwell in us, it must have its roots in us with all wisdom, uh, all skillfulness of the knowledge uh, of Torah. That's what we need men uh, to teach every day. There should be someone in here if no one is here teaching. Just stand again. And then someone walks in in here, reading from the Torah. There should be someone in Yas Bayat. Oh, I, when I teach on Wednesday, I'm going to teach. I will show us. They had service every day. They had gatherings every day. And that's the way it should be. Wednesday is not the tradition of the whole house. They have gotten that from Yah's house, all right? They had service every day. I can show you what they had service on Sunday and Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. I can show you. The Shabbat is a time to rest in the comfort of that knowledge of that truth. And you come together on the Shabbat and just rejoice. That's why your songs, your voice is loud. You can sing with resonance. You can sing with a radiance because you have got wisdom of the Torah and the knowledge of Yah. We should have service every day. Do you pray every day? Don't answer that. You study the Torah every day? Don't answer that. We should have service every day. You think we're not going to have service in New Jerusalem every day? It shall be a Shabbat unto us every day. Every day. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. He says, and let the word of Messiah dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching. And he uses the word admonishing, rebuking one another in psalms and in halal praises and in spiritual songs. Do we actually do that? Ah, quietness, huh? Do we actually among each other while you're working, singing? God's my hand in the master's mighty hand. But you allow your anger and your hostility to sing to your mind, don't you? Got my mind in your shoes, mighty hand. Ooh, walking in the Torah, oh, the Torah of life. Walking in the Torah of your... You let your countenance sing, your anger, 
your hostility. And when someone began to sing, you get mad as hell. Someone began to rejoice, you get mad as hell. Walking in the light of Yahshua. Walking in the light of Yah and Yah. Shoo, walking in the light of Yah, my Abba. I'm walking. My Ach, Wim, and I hope Tiffany, I hope that. I haven't heard from you all in a while, so I inject that. You've been on my mind for several weeks. So may Yah, Barak, Ara, Holt, Ara, Ach, Wim, there in Tennessee, and I hope Tiffany, I hope all is well with you and the family. Hallelujah. Let me close from a couple of scriptures. Let me finish this. It says, uh, admonishing one another in psalms and hallel praises, spiritual songs, singing with the free unmerited love and favor in your love to the master, Yahshua. See, we don't have that free unmerited love of Yah. So that's why we can't sing. When the old ones of Desayon in the cotton field, they would sing all day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When he was down, he would pick it up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know why they had to hum like that? Because Mr. Master didn't know what they were singing when they were humming like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. weary he couldn't walk he'd get up we dead we're so silly hallelujah I want to close with this one last verse. That's as Zachain would say. Hallelujah. I want to close from Ephesians. The reason I'm closing is because I'm tired and I'm hungry. I woke up this morning hungry. You ever waken hungry? I had hunger pains this morning. Hallelujah. And they were hurting too. But I'm all right now. I want to close with this. Great wisdom of Shaul, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 7. This is what Yah grants unto us. He says that there is an age or time that is coming, that in the ages to come. This is what Yah wants to do. In the ages to come, He might show the exceedingly riches of his unearned, unmerited Ahava, his love and favor. See his favor. And his kindness toward us through Yahshua HaMashiach. And if Yahshua in us, then we're in the age that we should show the kindness of Yah to one another. Through the revelation of Yahshua HaMashiach. Something is sick in your damn mind when you can't be kind. When you're not kind. I don't care who you are. And I don't particularly care whether you like me or not. That's a fact. I'm not the most likable person. And neither is you. And that's a fact. You may like you, but I love me. That we may show, even as he has shown to us, his great kindness. We should allow brotherly love and brotherly kindness to dwell among us. We need the strong Geberman strength to stand and let nothing remove them away from the ways of Yah. Not wife, not children. Not sons or daughters. This old woman has allowed nothing to remove her. Not sons, daughters, cousins, and kinfolks. She has held fast. 
That's the strength of beauty. I'm not going to give my Shia unto the hands of the wicked to impel him, for them to denounce him, speak evil of him. And I tell you, I'm not going to do that. Even when I was a young fool, I didn't do that. And that's just me. I gave it all up and I sold out and I mean that. And I am. I'm real of nothing else. I'm real. May the riches of your rest upon you all, Yisraya, our friends. You that have joined us and we also, my precious enemies, I hope you got enough bread today to feed you well. You got some biscuits and we certainly gave a little meat, not too much. You've eaten too much meat anyway, so we wanted to make sure that there was enough to make you healthy. And that's a fact. I don't care if you get upset with me. We'll get you all again before we dismiss. We close. I'm going to dismiss my Zaki. We ask you to assist to send an offering to help. Your home is being fed. It's amazing they get nothing free in Walmart, a dollar mart. No, we're not selling anything. We sell you the truth, you buy it. And so you give to keep and to sustain this truth. Let us stand to our feet. Hallelujah. In all things as we face Yerushalayim, in all things we do barak you are above for the excellence of your Torah. It is not of the strength of any man that one articulates the meaningful strength of your Torah, but it's your breath, the Ruach, that grants unto us revelation, the power, the mystique of the mystery revealed in your Yeshua HaMashiach, the power and the strength of the great excellence of your Torah truth, the healing power. You declare that you are Yarafa. You are the one that heals Yisraya. So we call upon the name of our Abaya, Rafa, the one that heals, the one that restores and makes alive. We pray for Yisraya, our Achim, Achim, those whose bodies need to be restored. Yeah. The medicine is not doing the doctors in all of their calculation, in all of their diagnostics of the diagnosis. Heal them, we pray. Restore in your Yeshua's name. Give them vitality, strength, and life. Do it in your Yeshua's name. We have no other confidant of one that we can trust. So we pray for the healing. We pray for the Zachim and, uh, and all Yisraya, our babies, our little ones, the one that is in the womb. We pray for all of your nation, your people. We ask your riches upon us all. The Shabbat as we rest. Bless the table you have prepared and the dining facilities. And give us strength of wisdom that we can appreciate your love kindness. And that we can love each other with love kindness. With kindness of heart, tenderness that we may add to these great riches. Whereby we shall neither be barren or unfruitful. But we may grow in the knowledge and the power of your sure Hamashiach. We ask the simple blessings today. Heal us all. We need your healing. Touch and strengthen. Restore ya. Your sure's mighty and most excellent name. We do barak you and we pray in your name. Hallelujah. 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 Ya barak Israel.